it was so weird, but it was like you were one of these uh, fountains and drains of light. It was kind of like a, a cell you were, and you were connected infinitely in all directions with every other being and thing in the universe, uh, and they also were one of these sort of fountains and drains of light. And it points to a core of light that's inside and that uh, is basically the source of all the different world religions. And it felt more real than, you know, like standing here. But it was just this other more real dimension. I don't know, it's very difficult to describe. A wisdom, which is very difficult to put into words, is found all over the world. And when it hits you, you know it. Sometimes it comes after long practice of meditations and spiritual discipline. Sometimes it comes for no reason that anybody can determine. We say it's the grace of God. That there comes this overwhelming conviction that you have mistaken your identity. Now, you don't have to be any particular kind of religion to get this experience. It can hit anyone, anytime, like falling in love. And that I suddenly understand why, exactly why everything is the way it is. It's perfectly clear. Wake up, man. Wake up and realize who you are. I and the Father are one, and he who has seen me has seen the Father. Brahman is not the creator of the world as something underneath and subject to Brahman but the actor of the world, the player of all the parts, so that everyone is a mask. Simply imagine that you're God and that you can have anything you want. Well, you'd have it for quite a long time. And then after a while, you say, this is getting pretty dull because I know in advance everything that's going to happen. And so you would wish for a surprise. And you would find yourself this evening in this church as a human being. The kind of person who is called to this is a person who has an exploring soul. And I don't believe we're talking theology here. In other words, this is not, you know, in Milton's wonderful phrase, the God who hung the stars like lamps in heaven. It's not about that. For me, that's a big question mark. You know, the entire world of every science fiction novel and story ever written is minuscule compared to the universes of strangeness and peculiarity that are accessible to any one of us, if you will, but apply the method. And if you're not willing to apply the method, then, you know, you're going to sweep up around the ashram till hell freezes over and not understand what is going on. It has very, very little to say about the mystery of being other than that it's there. And that's not practicing religion. Practicing religion is dancing with the mystery, losing and finding yourself in the mystery. It's some kind of effort to separate shit from Shinola. In other words, it's uh, some kind of effort to uh, distill uh, a, rat a, a truth from the blooming, buzzing confusion of the universe. So here we are, once again, gathered to contemplate uh, the forward rush toward the unspeakable, the historical ascent from the unknowable, and this very delicate moment of equilibrium, which is called the here and now. How are we doing? How are we doing in the here and now?
I somehow shattered the membrane between myself and uh, uh, ordinary space. Meaning is beheld. A vertiginous sense of falling away from this other reality. Time, I think it sticks with you. The details. It's a kind of invoking of it. some quality of seeing and understanding. A dimension has been added to ordinary perception to the degree that any one of us has this, uh, this connection back to the archaic in our life, it makes where we have been make a lot more sense. And it makes where we're going seem a lot more inviting. In my very clearest, highest moments, my ego subdued or inflated beyond all bounds, being much the same thing. In those moments when the universe accepts me into her bosom, or rather, I accept her embrace. When this is that and that this, a condition of utter simplicity costing not less than everything. Yet I will not be swept up in a false nirvana, nor in mindlessness, nor in hatred, nor in sweet dreams of tomorrow's promise, nor in the darkening gentle of another good night. For now I lay me down to stretch, down to sleep, Dreams come in which I must awaken. I had an experience. I can't prove it, I can't even explain it. But everything that I knew as a human being, everything that I am tells me that it was real. I was given something wonderful, something that changed me forever. A vision of the universe. It tells us undeniably how tiny and insignificant and how rare and precious we all are. You can never be lost. When have you ever been apart from me? 
you can never depart and never return, for we're continuous, indistinguishable.